What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today I'm going to be working on a new homepage, it's going to be called Homer and if you've been watching some of the videos you know that we worked on Heimdall about a month ago in the past I have worked with Flame and I think I might have worked with Dashy at some point too but we're going to work on a few different dashboards to see what we like best to use for our home lab so let's get started with Homer so to start off we are going to be deploying this through Portainer and Docker so if I come over to my home page, I have my Portainer instance, so I'm going to click local. Then I can come over here to app templates, and again, I am using the Novasphere template just to make it a lot easier. So if I did come over to settings, you can see I have his app template right in here. I have a video covering how to set all this up, so I'll put a card in the corner, so if you don't have it like this, you can. But I'm going to go over to app templates, and then I'm just going to search Homer. So there's Homer secured, and there's regular Homer. It looks like the difference between Homer Secure and Homer is that this won't connect through to your Docker containers to give you the statuses and stuff. So I'm going to use regular Homer. We're going to leave it all the same and I'm going to deploy the container. We're going to give this a minute to deploy and then we'll be back. So it takes about a minute and then you can see over here that Homer's starting up. We can look on the logs, see what's going on. Everything looks good. And if I come back over to containers, it says healthy. So we're just going to come over here to the right and we're going to click on the ports. We're going to open up Homer for the first time, and it looks like it just needs a second, so we'll just give it another minute to load up. So, for whatever reason, my environment was set up to use 166 as my IP, but my IP is 168, so here's Homer. I don't know. I fixed it. Um, here's Homer. This is the first page you'll see when you come on, and the first thing we're going to do is come over here in the top corner, we're going to change it to dark mode. Uh, the light mode is very bright. I was watching the last night on my phone, and I was blinded. So, uh, we can start the process to get it all going. You're going to need to make a user and a password. Uh, we'll just do this. I don't really know what you need this for. I'm guessing you're going to have to be able to sign in and out at some point to do configs and stuff. So, that's uh, probably what that will be for. So, I'll hit continue. You can save it if you want. And then we're going to have a couple blurbs so we can tell you to check out the documentation. So we can take a look at it really quick. They do recommend that you read the documentation after you do it. So it just covers over the basis like enter and edit mode, how to add an app, and then uh, how to configure it. You can resize and move stuff around, add categories. We're going to cover most of this in the video. So if you really want to read through the documentation, you can, but I'm going to cover most of this right now. So we're going to go to, you can either go to your board or go to the management board. So we're going to go to your board just to see what it looks like. And this is what it looks like by default. So this is the standard board they give you. And you can actually change all this around, delete it, start over, however you want to do it. But this is what they just give you to start with. They give you a little blurb to read through. They give you a to-do list. And it has some different stuff to do. Um, we can just get started right away with working on what we want to add. I want to change this, so I'm going to come over to enter edit mode. We're going to remove. I'm going to remove. And you just click the little gear and it gives you options. So some of them give you edit, duplicate, change position, change position, or remove. I'm just removing all of them for now. Uh, there's two times, so that's okay. I'm going to leave one of them because I kind of do want the time on there. And then there's the weather. The next thing we can do is do docker. And you can see in here, this is going to have all the Docker containers that I currently run. That's on the same machine. So you can see here is all the ones that I run in Portainer. And they see it through Homer. Which is nice because you can actually like select certain containers. And it will push through to start it, restart it. You could add it to the home page. You know, whatever you would like to do. Before we can really do anything with that, we do need to come over to Settings. And we need to add the integration to Docker. So let's just do that real quick. So all I did was come over here and I enabled the sidebars because I like the idea of those. I might take them off if we need, but it's okay. And then I enabled ping so I can actually ping out to the containers and see what's alive. Make sure you click the save changes button. My face is covering it, but it's down here in the bottom right. And then it will have that back. So then we can go back to our board. And I might take off the panels real quick. So let's do that. So I'm going to enable, disable. And we're going to leave this now like this. I thought it might look nice, but I don't think it does. And you can see all my stuff's back because I didn't save my changes. So I've noticed that Homer's really picky about you have to constantly save your changes. So I'll just delete this stuff again, and then we'll get started. 
So to start off, well, they do have a weather one, so edit, and then here we can come through and we can add it. So I'm going to just add a random city, so let's do Manhattan. We'll search for that, and I'm just going to throw Manhattan in there to hold its place. So we'll just select it, and then that's the weather for Manhattan, and that's in Celsius, but I don't use that in my area, so we're going to use Fahrenheit. So there you go, there's the weather for Manhattan currently. And then I have my time over here, so if you need to change your time zone, you can come over to the edit again and you can either put it in your city or you can just go by your time zone you could format it so if you want additional data so you could do like that and get the date and time so it's cool you got some different options with that but I think what everybody wants to see is let's start adding some widgets and some tiles and stuff for some docker containers so I'm gonna start off with a category and we're gonna call it docker type and then let's save so now I have my docker and now I'm going to add in some tiles to it so we're gonna add an app and over here is how we add our first app so we can do like a docker container or something else that we host on our services so I'm going to add well, let's add like pie hole so we can actually come in through here and we can search for pie hole and it will Autofill for the most part should sometimes it's a little slow You can see it's querying the new logo. So now it has it and then we're just going to go over and grab the IPs for our pie hole So I'll be right back So there is an internal address and an external address if you Leave that external address as it is it's not going to hit the right um, Page so I just have been pasting the internal address for both of them you can change the behavior if you want. I'm just going to leave that default. And then there's the status checker. So you can see if you know it's alive or if it's not. You can change the appearance if you want. I'm just going to leave that default. And then there is the integration. So you can grab your API key from Pile, similar to how we did in Heimdall. And you can put it in there and then you can have it so it really can link up. I'm not going to do it at the moment. So we're just going to hit save. So you do need it if you have the integration on. So I'm going to grab that real quick and we'll be right back. So just grab my API key real quick and I'm going to save it. I uh, don't want to save that and you can see over here that now it has my status is down because it's probably just still trying to reach out And if I want I could drag it right into that loop the new category we just made of docker So we can continue doing that and I could add more So if I want to add something like let's see sab nzbd. It's a download tool that I use We can come over to that we could do I'm just going to actually copy it from here and we're just gonna paste that there. And then I'll grab that and we'll be right back too. Okay, so I did the same thing. I grabbed the API and I added in here. So here's Sabin and ZBD. So now we have two Docker containers running. They both do different things. So now we can do some other stuff like come over to add something else and we could do a widget. So now I have like a downloader tool so I could actually do download speed. If we look through widgets, there's a bunch of different stuff. We have like indexer, we have for Usenets, uh, torrents, weather, download speed, you can do the date and time. You can do a video stream, which we might be able to integrate the motion eye video, um, the camera, into that video. So that would be cool. You can link like a Plex or a Jellyfin server. You get your summary from Pi-hole, media requests of so use like Jellyseer or Overseer, you can put it in there. Um, here's here's that one. There's statistics about it. You get bookmarks. You, get, you got a lot of cool stuff in here for the widgets. And I'm really starting to see why people really like Homar, but we're going to go over and just keep working with this. So we're going to do download speed. And I'm going to close that out and it should start pulling the stuff in a minute. For whatever reason, it's just not seeing um, these two apps up yet. So I'm just going to exit and save and see if they come up. All right. So I exit and save and I refresh the page. So it probably just needed a quick minute to like, you know, process everything through. So you can see I have Pi-hole online and I have Sab online. And if I come over to my download speed, you see I'm not downloading anything at the moment, but you can see I have the graph for what's currently at zero. If you use some other torrent provider download, you know, like Ubuntu torrents and stuff like that, they would be in here as well if it's linked on the page. But that's how you would add stuff like that. So we can keep adding more widgets. Uh, so you actually can come through here and you should be able to add right to Homer like that. So like if I add add guard home, I could do add to Homer and we'll just do default and it will be in there so I can close that I can click on oh. 
See, now I'm not in edit mode. See how it changes that really quick? So I'm going to change to edit mode. And then I'm going to edit. And then we could change the integration. So that's in there. And then I would just change my IPs. But I don't really use AdGuard Home anymore, so I'm not really going to add this. But that's how you would do it if you want to just add it from a Docker. You could just kind of grab it like that and click Add to Homer. And then you just do a little bit of a config and it's all set up too. So it's another cool option to do. I'm just going to remove that. So that's really the basics of adding like Docker containers. We can look at some of the other widgets and stuff. So we're going to go back to edit mode. And I'm going to come over to add a tile. And we can look at some of the widgets. So let's look at something like video stream. I want to see if I can get that set up to use like motion eye. So let's see. Uh, here it is. So I'm going to do edit. And I'm going to get the feed URL. So I'm actually going to get my motion eye URL. And I'm going to add it in there. So I'll be right back. All right, so I tried to add it in, but it looks like it's not compatible with what Homer wants, which is all right. I might try messing with that more, see if it works. But you can add in, like, a media stream if you have something that has, like, a streamable link, I guess. So I'm just going to remove that. All right, so we can add some other stuff. You know, you can look through the widgets. You can see what you might want to add. Like I said, you could add, like, uh, the overseer notifications. You could have more stuff like that in there. You can really build this out to be how you want, and everything can be repositioned nicely. So, like, if I want my weather over there, I can add in my calendar. Uh, I could throw that in over here, so I could have my calendar up. Uh, let's see. It doesn't really want to reposition at the moment. You can do it manually like that, or you're supposed to be able to drag and drop, but I seem to be going in and out when I add stuff. If I come over there, there you go. So now it works. So I could do stuff like that. So I could have that up like that, and then I have my time over here. And then you could always add, like, the panels. I'm just going to save just so I don't lose it. And then you could always add in, like, the panels again. So if I wanted, let's say, my downloads over here I can put that in the panel I can put my calendar over there and then we can space up maybe I want my time up there and I can put the weather up there so that'll be there and then I have like that and uh, there's my docker so I have that category you can really customize this how you want and if you are like a programmer you're good with CSS you can come in here and you can add custom CSS so you can really change stuff come over here and you can change the title so it could be like bar mines home lab and if i sit, save changes you can see after i so I'll, I'll go back to the board you can see over here now i just changed the title page up here so now it says bar mines home lab you can customize the board again and it's already preset to use a bunch of different icons so you could change the logo on the top left if you want so if you want to like drag in a custom image, you could put that in the uh, directory where the images are. And then you could do the same thing with the favicon. You could change the background. Um, I'm just gonna leave all this the same. You could like do it so when it scrolls through, you could change it. And then you of course can change all your colors. I kind of really like the Homer colors currently, so I think I'm just gonna leave those default. But that's really most of the customization settings. Um, you could change like column sizes and stuff like that, but that's all basic stuff. But that's really all it is, is just adding in your tiles and your categories, your apps. You can add regular bookmarks if you want. So it really is a nice home lab tool because it does have all your stuff in one place. And I really like how the widgets can really use the API to get like your download speeds or your pie hole stats and stuff like that. So Homer is definitely a good option if you're looking for a new uh, home dashboard to use in your home lab. So that's another home dashboard we could use in our home lab, it's Homer. Uh, like I said, we used Heimdall before, we used Flame, and I used to use Dashy way back when I started my home lab. Uh, so far, I think out of the utility purposes, I like Heimdall and Homer the best. I really do like uh, Flame, but I don't like that it can't show like the up-down status and the other stuff like download usage and pie hole stats and stuff like that. I like that Heimdall was able to do that, and it looks like Homer can do all that stuff as well. So I'm really going to see which of the two that I want to use going forward when I have some time to change all my dashboards over. The one thing I did really like about Heimdall that I haven't seen in Homer yet is that I can do a backup config and restore my config from it. So if your Docker container breaks or you lose it or whatever it is, you have a backup to restore from. But it might be in there, I don't know. I would have to keep looking. 
But I do want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I do have a Discord server. I'll have a link below if you want to use that. And I have a bunch of different hardware that I use, with, whether it's on the Zemo board or my mini servers or anything else. I'll have that below, all the Amazon links. If you want to check any of that stuff out that I use, I have my keyboard, my mouse, I use all that good stuff. So check out those Amazon links. Join the Discord if you want to chat. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.